Congo is uh, among the very poorest countries in the world. We, we don't understand the level of poverty where we don't even have a table to eat off of or, or a chair to sit on. And so uh, Woodmizers really played a key role in uh, bringing development and bringing hope to a very difficult part of Africa. My name is Glenn Chapman and uh, we've been living there since uh, 1957. We grew up out there, graduated from high school, and then went back as missionaries 25 years ago. Uh, we work in rural leadership training. In the bush, we have hundreds of churches without any pastoral leadership at all. Our objective is to train people in a rural setting so that they stay rural, they can keep up their rural skills. So because of the war, because of all the difficulties, the infrastructure of Congo, the industry has all collapsed. So there is very little employment, very little to give people hope. We, we don't understand the level of poverty where we don't even have a table to eat off of or, or a chair to sit on. It's much more than just hunger, but it's, it's just the dignity of being able to have a place to sit down. Lumber was virtually unavailable. What furniture people had in the past was wearing out. People would complain to me. They had received guests and they didn't have a chair for their father-in-law, for example, to sit on. Or their children had to eat their meals on the ground because they no longer had a table. And so I looked around and we said, we've got plenty of trees. You know, why is it that, that we don't have any lumber? Please they took me out to to the forest where they would dig holes uh, under a tree and try to saw these, uh, these boards that one guy would be in the pit and another guy would be on top and the guy in the pit would get sawdust falling on him uh, all the time. It was just very difficult to keep a straight line. We thought, well, why not look to getting a, a portable uh, lumber mill? And so I came back to the States and uh, was able to get originally an LT25. Um, the LT25 was put in a container. Even though it had wheels, you couldn't tow it uh, because the, the roads were so poor. So we uh, took off the undercarriage and put the wood miser in the, in the back of a truck and, and drove it up to, to where we live. And this was uh, August of 98. And as soon as it arrived in country, war broke out the missionaries were being evacuated. It was a, a very tense time of everybody leaving. As, as we started to cut our first trees, and I, as I f was showing the Congolese the usefulness uh, of the wood miser, that same month, we were told that we had to evacuate, that we had to leave, because the foreign armies were, were so close to where we were. Well, I looked at this, this project that had been a dream. The mill had just arrived. And uh, how could I leave when uh, this dream was just being fulfilled? Uh, and so I put my wife and children on a plane and they were evacuated to South Africa. And I stayed on at Kikongo. And as the armies were advancing across the country and destroying, at Kikongo, we were experiencing new birth, new life. Well, and everybody was excited. Never had there been an industry. And all of a sudden the youth who had had no thought of employment could learn how to be carpenters and people who had carpentry skills would arrive and, and get lumber and boat builders arrived and, and started building boats. People uh, flocked to the church center because they want to live uh, close to a place where things are positive, where things are improving, where things are, are happening. And the war was continuing uh, and it turned out to be Africa's first world war. So it continued on for, for eight more years of using the LT-25. And then we were able to get a uh, LT-15. It's, it's more portable in an area where you don't have a truck to, to, to pull it around. You can take it apart and carry the different sections by hand. We're, we're right on a Wamba River, and uh, the villagers, they cut down the logs and then float the logs down to us. And then we roll the logs up onto the mill uh, make the lumber, and then people purchase the lumber and take it down river. Word got around that there's lumber available at Kikongo. Uh, there wasn't lumber available anywhere else. 
And so this uh, a guy showed up and he said that uh, he needed a boat. And when we saw what, what he needed, we were, we were amazed and we said, wow, can we really build something uh, like that at Kikongo? But sure enough, we were able to produce enough uh, lumber for that boat. They made an announcement in church that on such and such a day, they were going to make a lot of coffee for you to drink. So we had a big party down there uh, that day as all the young men uh, put their hands on the boat and, and pushed it. Once it reached the water, I think it was kind of a, an unbelievable moment. Everybody said, we really did it? You know, it was like we were going to go down and drink coffee. Whether we were going to be able to make the boat go into the water or not, we were going to go have some coffee. But to realize that it really worked and we really got it in the water uh, was an amazing thing. Eventually, that boat went on to the, uh, onto the mighty Congo River. I was on, on a bike ride one time early in the morning, and there was a, a crowd of women in the middle of the trail. They wouldn't let me by because a woman was giving birth uh, in, in the trail. And I asked them, well, why didn't you head to the hospital earlier? And they said, well, we got to the stream, but the bridge was too rickety. They weren't able to cross. And so I organized the village, and I said, give us two logs and we'll cut the lumber, and together we can build a bridge. And so they floated two logs down. We designed the bridge and cut it to length, and then uh, on a certain day, all the people from the villages around came and each got a piece of wood, and we carried it to the site and then, and then slapped it together. And so now the, the people have a way to get to the hospital rather than try to balance themselves on these rickety old log bridges that they had, the stick bridges, and uh, the lumber mills been able to provide dignity to Africa because uh, people can take advantage of their own resources and turn it into something useful and valuable uh, for themselves. And, and the children now uh, can have desks uh, to study at, whereas before um, you know, they'd have to bring a, a piece of wood that they would set on the ground to, to sit on. Uh, so it's, it's made a tremendous impact. And it's honoring if you can bury your relatives in coffins rather than just wrap them up in cloth or something like that. We buried a, um, a local chief and everybody uh, was so appreciative that this chief could be buried with dignity, uh, not just in cast off scraps of wood, but, but with the best lumber. And uh, that really brought honor to the people, to the chief that they, that they buried. On a, a day of Thanksgiving where everybody was bringing produce of the earth, which is mostly manioc and peanuts and corn and chickens, and the lumber mill also decided that we would bring our po a portion of lumber. We would bring in a symbolic board and then write on the board how many boards uh, were going to follow or, or what we were offering uh, to the church. In Congo, when you give your offering, you have to dance down the, down the aisle to present your offering. And so these guys would dance with their board and bring it down. And, and The mill is owned and operated by the pastoral school. The students can work at the mill in the afternoons, and they can earn tuition fees. So the wood miser is actually helping the students go through, go through school, go through pastoral school. And to be a pastor in a rural setting, you need to be bivocational. The lumber mill enables the students to become bivocational, to learn another skill as well. When our students come, they come, they come poor. But after they've been at Kikongo, and even though they have to pay tuition and have to plant their own fields, they always leave much better off than when they came. Because, you know, they're making furniture and beds and tables and they want to take all that stuff back with them, get it back to their village or else sell it somewhere else. And Life is pretty discouraging in Congo with the war and all that. But whenever I need encouragement, I walk down to the river and I sense the excitement and the enthusiasm. Uh, at the mill, there's progress, there's change. Woodmiser is really playing a role in in helping the Congolese be able to help themselves and, and rebuild themselves. And it's providing them with the tools that they need for their dignity and being able to repair the country. Well, people can always uh, support uh, the, the lumber mill project. 
we could always use a good mechanic. Sawyers, uh, they're always welcome to come to Congo. Come stay with us and uh, camp out on the sandbar and experience Africa and really make a big, uh, big contribution.